welcome to the first ever recording. We've done this book club before, but this is the first time we're recording it. This is House of a Thousand Books. We read scary books. No Stephen King, unfortunately, with the the hope to expand our horizons in the genre of horror. And my name is Brody. My name is Stephanie. I am not well versed in the horror genre, so I am learning and experiencing as I go with friends. And my name is Gabby. I am also a novice horror novel reader and just excited to be here. (laughs) Hello, everyone who's listening to this. My name is SJ, co-host, co-founder, and horror veteran, aficionado, freak, spawn of the devil, that's it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Ooh, let's go around and also say your horror like franchise, whether that is like a book or a property in the film world or a character. I feel like that's telling of your personality. I'm going to say just going back into probably what I like one of my childhood favorites would be Jack Skellington. Ooh, that's great iconic wow that's tough to follow well i mean i feel like for me it's not a character but i think like i said earlier talking about this man but i think um for me and steven or sj it's uh stephen king at least for me i don't want to speak for you but um just those um really fucked up stories from that very fucked up individual has i think definitely has been what got me into horror because i mean Thinking back to the first ever horror movie I ever saw was the original It with uh, Tim Curry. And it kept me awake for at least a week. And I had to sleep in my parents' bed. So Stephen King is mine. Or Tim Curry. No, Stephen King's one of the reasons why I didn't like horror for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. I guess my touch point with horror and my touch point for like being a big reader is both Goosebumps. Oh. Because Goosebumps got me to love reading and be obsessed with horror. Wait, I love that. So that movie. really was like a double whammy for me. And That's watching great. Like those, the TV show, like the first chapter book I remember reading cover to cover is a Goosebumps book for sure. You know 100%. Book? Um, yes, I do. And it is um, The House of No Return because the cover was so fucking scary to me because it was literally a just a haunted one. house. I just always loved haunted houses, mm. literally like literal haunted establishments and also like Halloween haunted houses. From a very young age, don't know what that where like that developed, but yeah, so goosebumps, I think. Um, I actually have a very similar story to Brody. Um, I would say the shining really like just put like the cherry on top to like what I needed to like really to understand that I love horror because that's like it's like psychological like horror almost, which is kind of maybe what what like I gravitate toward in like the horror genre that like horror mediums that like we can enjoy yeah no and it's funny because i think the shining was the first stephen king book i actually read so Mm. steph we're very connected there um i have yet to read the shining i think the shining was my first stephen king as well Woo! nice that's some heat to start with yeah no the first stephen king i ever picked up was the shining it felt like the most tangible Mm. to read at the time yeah it's not it's not as long as some of his oh. other book stuff and it's it's such an iconic story. Yeah. This book club like I said in the beginning is a really great way to learn about other horror and also I think just really showed me like the different genres that exist within horror and I think we've done a pretty good job so far of reading a lot of different kinds of scary books. Um, not all of them have been great, but that's, you know, you live and you learn. And that's the whole point of reading. I really enjoyed our current selection that we just Mm -hmm. read, which was Eric LaRocca's Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, which came out only two years ago. It's a short book. It's a novella, um, 120 pages, and I didn't need it to be any longer. I needed it to end while, where it was. It's a very short blurb, but it's a short book, so I guess it makes sense. Um, Statomasochism, obsession, death. 
A whirlpool of darkness churns at the heart of a macabre ballet between two lonely young women in an internet chat room in the early 2000s. A darkness that threatens to forever transform them once they finally succumb to their most horrific desires. Now, this leads me to a question that I wanted to ask you guys to start. And I wanted to know what you have done today to deserve your eyes. Let's just start talking about it. How did you feel about the way that the story is told through like the emails and the texts or IM messages? I I enjoyed it. I thought that it, number one, made it flow really easily. Yeah, I agree. And I also think too, it was, it's like an interesting way of writing because for such a short story, it's really hard to like get to know characters. Um, but I think that reading their emails and their chat room messages like that is a really quick way of getting their personality and obviously some stuff about them from the beginning with the apple peeler i really enjoyed it because like i said it just it made the characters much more real with such a short amount of time and i mean like that's how we have conversations as well like we have full-on conversations just with like text messages no yeah that's true i think the only thing for me at least the pet peeve was the usernames consistently popping up yes it was at a point where my mind just I wasn't even looking at them anymore so I kind of just I mean you can pretty much tell even without the usernames who's talking uh but I think I think that part and like the all this I understand that it's making it look like a an email so like having the subject and all stuff but I was just like I don't give a fuck about any of this (laughs) Um, so that part was a little annoying, but I did, I thought it was a very like unique mm-hmm. and interesting. I felt like I was like intruding. Well, I first want to talk about that author's note, which actually starts the book because that confused the absolute shit out of me immediately and set the tone for this weird ass book because typically an author's note is not fiction. Like it's genuinely the author being like, Hey, I wrote this book and here's why enjoy it. Never in my life have I read an author's note that directly influences the story. But again, independently published, he doesn't have to follow any fucking rules. So like this author's note, I read as like the prologue because that's what I it is. It. You did? <laughs> Steph, okay, it. actually, can I call Steph out really quick? Steph has never read, wait, no, is it the prologue and the epilogue? <gasps> Steph just doesn't read those. Why? I'm like, Steph, those are part of the story. Those, those are, are yes. <laughs> You have to go back and reread every book every you've ever read. Every single one. Those usually have I some mean, big you info. take away all my books on my Goodreads and start at zero. <laughs> <laughs> but typically, Steph, in your defense, an author's note would be optional because they typically don't have anything to do with the story. In this case, however, not true because the author's note is fiction. It's so what a choice made by our author immediately to just confuse the absolute shit out of you. True. Yeah. No, I think... I, I, I don't read a lot of author's notes because a lot of cases I feel like it's just them like rambling and I'm like, all right, I'm about to read your story, dude. I, I really don't care. But just because SJ, you told me about the author's note, I was like, oh, okay, I'll actually read it. And yeah, it was nuts. I was like, whoa, we're already, we're, we're diving right in. Um, I think it gave like really good background and you know set the scene because you're like okay something bad has happened and um we're gonna find out what but yeah i thought that was really interesting and it makes it definitely seem more real no he actually had a whole conniption about it he was just like i googled this yeah he googled the people's names he's like nothing's coming up is this real is this not real it's not supposed to be fake like he was like oh you're almost yelling at me about it you not supposed to be fiction. <laughs> Am I the only one who reads author's notes in general when you read a book? Yeah, I, I read every it. author's note of every book I read. No, I, I don't use it. Theorist. <laughs> Is that an unpopular opinion? Comment down below. <laughs> yeah, we should do a poll. I, I don't know. know. I read every author's note. I read it like every part of the book. Well, I feel like now I'm like, I don't know what I'm missing now. Because if I, Sometimes I guess they're boring as fuck, but yeah. I just feel weird skipping them. I don't know. Weird. I didn't feel anything when I skip a prologue and an epilogue. <laughs> Those are parts of the story. No, you have to touch that. I'm sorry. For no. This. I didn't realize. I have forever been changed. <laughs> no, that's so funny, though. <laughs> oh, just, my God. I'm dead at that. Um, okay. Oh, so we open up with the ad that um, we found out that Agnes is putting online 
to sell her family's heirloom of not something remotely precious, <laughs> but an apple peeler that her grandmother was a badass bitch and got. Do you remember why she got it or how she convinced her husband to get it? She put a sewing needle in an apple and he took a bite of it. Hell yeah. And then she came home and they were like, something happened to your husband. She was like, oh no, what could have happened? <laughs> I know. I just get a visceral reaction to that because I stopped, I gasped, and then, like I like wanted to feel like the roof of my mouth. I was like, I want to know how he bit into it. Because you know what I was picturing? You know the episode of SpongeBob when they, dis- they discover fire? Oh. And, and Patrick <laughs> burns a stick on a stick and then bites right through it and it goes yeah. like, through his jaw. Probably. That's what I was picturing. <laughs> That's horrible. Because you could definitely like stick a sewing needle in an apple and not really, like, very rarely would you eat. The, the hole is so small, you wouldn't be able to see where the needle was inserted into the apple. Especially if you weren't just looking. People just bite into the apple. Right. What even, what was the point of that? Well, she got it, man. Yeah, I mean, what does that have to do with the peeler, though? Because that's how she got the peeler. Because it shuts him up. I think she, like, does she, like, come clean about it? And she's like, yeah, don't fuck with me. Because she was like, we went to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day, we were in the store buying my apple. While his jaw was sh- shut. Like, oh. it was, like, so shut. I don't know. We're, we weren't privy to that conversation. Oh, I was under the impression that he was like, oh, my God, you're so right. We need an apple peeler. I can't have this happen again. Yeah, it doesn't. It do- Honestly, it's not clear. It says the guy came and told him that your husband bit on a sewing needle that was stuck in his apple. And a week later, my great grandmother was at the local department store picking out an apple peeler. I had to read that over three times to like make sure I was understanding. Yes. I feel like it was a threat. She was like, yeah. You, you sure you don't want to buy me that apple peeler? The tone, like, it was immediate. I don't know. It really bought me in. Like I said, I opened this book, and I was the first to read it out of everyone, not a brag. But I, like, had no preconceived notions going in. So I was like, I just want to read the first chapter, like, get a feel for what this book is about. And I read the whole fucking thing. Like, did they all like, read it in one setting? Mm-hmm. I think so. I did. I think I read it in, like, two hours. And, like, that first chapter alone, I was like, fuck. Yeah. But then, basically, she puts the most fucking eloquently stated Craigslist ad (laughs) up on the internet, selling her apple peeler. Then she actually gets a response by a lovely lady, question mark? Is it it Craigslist, or is it... I think it's some type of weird queer Yeah, I thought it was like, I guess not Facebook, but yeah, it was supposed to be some social thing. Like, the, the big thing was that it was in a group chat of like LGBTQ yeah, people. Yeah, a safe space. Yeah, a safe space. So then like, mingling. it kind of sets up, oh, like, you also like women. Oh, like, it yeah. kind of, it was basically like a queer Craigslist slash like Facebook. Because it also said like to converse. Yeah, just like a platform to get connected, I guess. Yeah. Like a Reddit, like a subreddit situation. Well, and, and we meet Zoe. Like, as you were saying. Yeah, well, she responds back. And she is interested in buying the apple peeler. And although she has no real reason to buy it, she she does. She buys it for her grandpa. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And it's it's more, like, because her grandma, like, knew the singer Charles Ives. Oh, yeah. There's a family story. Yeah, that was very, that was very interesting. I really liked that. I, I kind of like that it wasn't exactly the apple peeler that was, like, the reasoning behind her wanting it, but it was more, like, the story behind it. That wasn't even a true story. That wasn't confirmed. And I think that's, like, kind of, it's a motif that goes on where it's, like, nothing is ever truly confirmed. Gabby. First of all, I love that word, motif. Uh, thank you. English 101. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you're right. It does set that up because there is a lot of non-confirming anything in this story because it's all told over chat or email and yeah, it's all online. rarely any photos. And we know that everyone online only tells the truth. So right. I'm glad that we know this. <laughs> um, yeah. So then Zoe ends up connecting with her and going like, hey, want to buy this, blah, blah, blah. And so they make the transaction and Agnes is like, thank you. Actually, like I need this because... I need rent money. And she goes, oh, shit, baby, I got you. Say less. Let me be your sugar mama. Comes a sugar mommy. Let's go. Pays for our rent. And Agnes is like, thank you so much. You're so kind. And so they form this, like, little bond over that. So that that's part one, just them connecting and making that, like, 
now instead of just like a friendly transaction now it's more of a financial game which Agnes never asked for but she got so really it was just Zoe being this nice gracious person donating some money for a fellow LGBTQ person in need yeah yeah Agnes tells her about how when she came out to her family it caused them to cut ties with her basically and Zoe was like very much seeming to identify with that and also just be like yo I have the money to do this and I need to help out someone else like myself so let's do this thing were those transactions though or that person's intentions though like what was in it for Zoe at least from the at the beginning like true was it this plan is this this because okay well we'll get into that but like We obviously never find out anything about Zoe. So that could be quite literally any person in the whole world, whatever identity that they have. And it was very speculative of just like what their deal is. Because remember they had like people, they were like, oh yeah, like I just ended things with this girl and like I had to cut her loose or whatever, like some weird. I remember this specifically. She was like, we had our expiration date. And I thought it stuck with me. Yeah, something just vague. I remember that, but can you say that one more time? What? So, yeah, so um, I feel like already we're, like, already kind of distinguishing, like, a hierarchy between, like, Zoe and and Agnes. And she was like, oh, like, Agnes was like, oh, are you, like, like with someone right now? And Agnes was like, I, like, just said, like, we just said goodbye. Like, we just parted ways. Like, we met our expiration date. Mm. And that's when, like, her and Agnes, like, oh, like, I'll be on tomorrow if, like, you're around or whatever. But we're already, like, seeing Zoe be, like, the provider and, like, the, like, person to, like, take care. Oh, sorry, Zoe to take care of Agnes. And Agnes is, like, fully just, like, letting Zoe scoop her up and take care of her. Like, very, very quickly, if she, like, yeah, this person, like, she's going to take care of me. Yeah. yeah. You know, the, very naive. Very yeah. naive. And that yeah. segues perfectly into part two, which is what have you done to deserve your eyes today? So they are beginning to talk more and Zoe convinces Agnes that she should start coming out of her shell more. And she talks about how her grandfather used to say, you know, what have you done to deserve your eyes today? Uh, so she tells her, I want you to go out and buy a red dress and wear red lipstick and I want you to take a picture, send it to me. So she does. And people are looking at um, Agnes and she's like, I, and she got sent home early. Cause they're like, dude, you can't, you can't do that. And she like, she dressed, she bought the dress in the middle of lunch. So she came in fully <laughs> in one set of clothes, went out to lunch and came back in a whole new set. Like, yeah, that's, that's going to raise some flags. Yeah. Um, And then, and then she says, you know what, n- tomorrow, I want you to leave your underwear where someone's going to find it. And so she leaves it in the bathroom. And as she's walking out, she makes eye contact with one of her coworkers who's coming in and sees the underwear. And so it's like, bitch, I know, I know you're the one who fucking put it there, you weirdo, and gets ratted on and gets fired. Yeah. She's like, but exhilarated the whole entire time. And that's when mommy Zoe's like, listen, you don't need that job. I told you I will take care of you. What we can do is set up a contract. I felt very Fifty Shades then, too. (laughs) Yeah. What's a relationship without a contract, you know? Mm, Very, very normal thing. Oh, lock it down. (laughs) No, I just wanted to really unpack, like, what have you done to deserve your eyes today? Or at least, like, the story that Zoe gives. Like, I would still be like, no, that that story didn't didn't make this better. Like, what? And just, like, what did it, what was, what did that mean? Like, you had to do something risky every single day to deserve your eyes. Like, what? what are you even getting at and like what if like what would happen if like she like went to bed and like told her dad she's like yeah i don't really know if i like did anything today like i don't know like what would he have said would he have ripped out gotten a, his apple peeler and gotten it out like his dad's apple yeah, peeler? Well, we'll talk about we'll talk about that mm. but, <laughs> right like i would because of course we read the tagline that was like what sparked me and brody's interest in this yeah. so i was like oh, i can't wait to read it and really understand what the fuck that means and let me tell you i read it and I still don't know what the fuck that means. <laughs> I only have more questions. Like, yeah, because I mean, what is it like? Wear a red dress? Like, what does that have to do with your eyes? Take off your underwear and leave it at work. Like, you deserve your eyes now. It's like, like, wait, what? Like, you deserve to like see a more world. Like, you deserve to see. You oh. deserve to like exist now and like see the world more because like you're being like more daring. That's how I took it. 
no, I mean, that's really interesting because I, I have no idea. Um. <laughs> uh, but what I wanted to point out was this is the only time that Zoe asked for a picture to confirm. Right. Oh, yeah. So at this point, the dynamic between Zoe and Agnes is becoming farther and farther apart because through the picture, we confirm Agnes's identity, but we never get that with Zoe. Right. And this is the only picture ever that's been sent. Everything other could be fake or whatever, but this is the only time when there is a confirmation of Agnes, at least. Yeah, and it, I think, like you said, like it just, when I was reading it, I was taking everything Agnes said for its value because I believed that she was like doing this stuff. Whereas Zoe, there was absolutely no reason to believe anything. The little tidbits that she even gave, you know, Zoe could have been a man. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like it, Zoe could have been anybody. And I think also because Zoe was the one with the, the username that was like Marigold or something like that doesn't even have Zoe's name in the username, which isn't telling, but it's something because it's like, mm -hmm. it could be anyone at that point. Mm -hmm. No, you're right. I didn't notice that till just now because Agnes thought she was cute and shit. Am I the only one that took Zoe for like, I, I really thought it was like her name was Zoe. I had all the faith that it was like really a woman and she really was just oddly like dominant. <clears throat> Dominance, that, that's a kink. I mean, it could very well be though, but that's it. Like we're reading this story set in 2000. This is the first iteration of a social media platform to exist, which is just like anonymous chat rooms you can't fact check you can't run like google someone's name like the google search engine wasn't even created literally the other thing is though that i did just think of like in the author's note or anytime when it talks about the actual case it does talk about the investigation into zoe mm. whatever Ooh. okay okay so i did just think of that that could confirm but also you know it could be a zoe but you don't know anything if she's saying is true still mm -hmm. uh, true I don't yep. know. I think the fact that her or their username is like neutral is telling because yeah. especially right like again your first social media platform like would you think to be creative in a social well I guess Agnes is as creative as well. Agnes in Wonderland that's funny. Yeah but I think but, that's the thing it's like know. using your name in like a play on words somehow that exactly. would, would feel common sense just she went out of her way to make sure her name wasn't there does anyone want to go over the contract no i was shocked to see the contract i thought it was going to be convoluted to like trick agnes to like sell her soul sign here style haha -ha, brody but it was straight out was like no i'm going to be your like your master and you will be my subordinate <laughs> like this is going to be a power dynamic and you're going to sign it okay but no pressure to, like, if you don't want to. I was like, okay, like, damn. Zoe like, went for it. Oh, okay. I have the I have the rules. I'll paraphrase. Please read them. Okay. The drudge agrees to obey to the best of her ability and to devote herself entirely to the pleasures and desires of the sponsor. That's, like, the first rule. So, basically, the drudge has to do everything that, like, Agnes has to do every, anything that Zoe wants. The drudge agrees to hand over the password and all subsequent details of her banking information to the sponsor. This was odd to me. The drudge will sleep in the nude with the air conditioning on full blast, even in the winter months. I love that, honestly. Again, no way to no way to see if they're actually doing that. No confirmation, besides maybe the electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, wait, that's a good point. I fully thought this was going to be like, you're moving in with me. The drudge will only consume food with the following times, 10 a.m., 1 p.m., and 6 p.m., and that's a strict feeding regimen. The drudge will confer with the sponsor before making any large purchases. The sponsor accepts full responsibility for the drudge. That's like one sentence. This includes but not limited to the drudge's survival, health, physical well-being, and mental well-being. The drudge agrees and understands that any infractions of this contract or any act the drudge commits will displease the sponsor and will result in punishment. Ooh, that's hot. Again, hot. The agreement may not be assigned by either party to any third party, and this agreement may be amended in writing to the sponsor's behest, behest and will require compliance from both parties. 
So they have nine rules for this contract. Yeah. And I find it interesting because, first of all, the punishments are never listed ever, I don't think. So that's the first thing. I would like to know what the ideas for the punishments were just because I'm fucked up like that. But also just rehearing it, Zoe, the sponsor, really doesn't have any responsibility because they also go on to say next, there, this isn't a legal document. There's no legal binding to this. So for her to sign a contract saying, I take responsibility for the drudge, it doesn't actually mean shit because it's not legally binding. So it's just the drudge having to do all this shit and that's it. I'm saying I'm responsible. Yeah, it doesn't even say that she's going to pay for her stuff, right? I think it's implied. Implied, but, but it doesn't She's say. responsible for her financially. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So it does say that. At least it gives her at least that. <laughs> yeah. That means nothing. It's not legally yeah. blind and binding. Right. But I actually thought, I thought it was a gotcha moment because... There's a part that says this contract is valid from the day the drudge replies this email with accepted, understood, and agreed to, and is effective for all time unless terminated by the sponsor. So the only responsibilities that the sponsor have is to be financially responsible for this person, and they have the power to end this contract and the drudge doesn't. So I was like, that's not, none of this is a two-way street. This is... Well, that's the point. Yeah, yeah. but she it's wants just like... to strip her of her identity. She doesn't right. want her to be her own person. And Agnes does quit. She like yeah. makes it. She quits yeah. first. I just thought it was a... when I was reading this, I read that and I was like, oh fuck, this is where it's gonna get fucked because she's yeah. not gonna want to do this anymore. Because I mean, again, from this point, you've only ever read the first, um, the first chapter, and for me, SJ and Brody, we read the author's note in which Agnes is pinned as a victim. So in my head, I'm like, oh, like Agnes is about to get fucked over because of yeah. this agreement. Right. But then it ends up not even being so. Yeah, because what happens next? This is the salamander thing. Now. So yeah. yeah, so Zoe asks yeah. or tells Agnes, hey, go down to this park, hang out for a little bit, find a salamander. You'll find him around the pond, pick it up, keep it and keep it with you for the day and keep it alive and then when nightfall comes smash it with a rock and kill it and agnes does it and agnes says she didn't think that she would be able to do it but she does exactly what zoe says and because of that then she kind of freaks out and is like uh this is way more than i wanted to do like this is really messed up um i don't want to do this anymore and like you said, Gabby, like I was really surprised when Zoe said back, oh, okay, contract voided, done. That's it. Sorry. I'm really sorry about everything. I was really expecting Zoe to be like, well, too bad. Uh, you signed this shit and you're in it now. But but like still, it's like what is nothing is binding Agnes to doing any of this. It's it's just her own will and I mean, I guess there is definitely a power dynamic now, but it's also, you know, over the internet, over chat room, over email, like it's not, no one's really forcing her to do this. And she no did it. No picture confirmation. No picture confirmation. But also like financially, like she's like financially debted to Zoe now. Like that she's is true. paying all of her bills. She doesn't have any job. She's fired from her job. Like That's true. Also, this is giving the idea that Zoe might be a sociopath. Killing animals, like that's... That's psychotic. And having someone else do it? No. So that was, like, kind of where I was like, oh, Zoe's, like, not a good person. Like, Zoe's really... Well, I thought she was playing, like, a game of chicken with her. Yeah. Like, just to see if she would fucking do it. Because for Zoe, she has nothing to lose. Zoe is just... she. Obviously, she's in the top position. She has nothing to lose. Yeah. She really doesn't. So, if really, she just... I thought she was just fucking around with her. I mean, we'll get into it, but she Zoe's literally, like, I didn't think you were going to do it all of this yeah yeah but again it just shows how desperate agnes is for connection and attention yeah and acceptance and love yeah and i think i think that's what it is because it, I, at least that's what it feels like mostly because there is the financial aspect but i feel like it's really only talked about in the beginning and then never really again and it does feel like more of the connection part of it because it's feeling i mean they say that they love each other like I, I yeah that's, um that's a good segue into you know like okay so like they do break up they break up and yeah. then like as eventually like long story short agnes is like okay i really want like i want you back whatever 
Yeah, Maybe. I overreacted. Like immediately, like yeah, two like days go by. Yeah. And then yeah. ultimately he's always like, what do you always wanted in life? And Agnes is like, I want, like, I want a child. Like, yeah. I, want, I want a kid. Well, she prefaces that with the salamander. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait, yeah. Okay, I want to backtrack just a little bit. One, I want to clarify uh, something about the story where Agnes does actually do it. She names the salamander, keeps yes. it in the pocket the whole day. Um, and does end up killing it and then giving it a burial. In my second, I wanted to ask a question of when Zoe is telling her what to do, she goes, you know, carry it around in your pocket all day. If it dies, get another one, keep it in your pocket all day. Then when the sun sets, go into the parking lot where no one can see you. And I want to ask you guys at this point, what did you think she was going to ask her? Put it up for <laughs> yeah. That, I straight up was like, oh no, oh no. I, I did. I, I, my brain went there immediately because I'm literally on the page. She says, yeah, you'll find them in a moist area. They love putting their little bodies in damp, cool places. And I said, fuck, it's going up yep. the vagina. Immediately. Um, That's going to be to her baby. Point, the second <laughs> I read that, I said, oh, it's going up her vagina. Because she said she's she was dead. So she had already told Zoe she was desperate to like create life and feel life inside of her so the second it said salamander i went fuck maybe because i just read mayfly but <laughs> i was like god damn no i i thought the same thing i thought the same thing plus the other like things that she's requested for agnes is like kind of like sexual like where like put your panties there like wear red innocent, like innocent it kind stuff. of like yeah. made sense that like maybe she'd want to be like Put the salamander up your pussy. Yeah, well, that's what I thought it was going for sure. We actually haven't made a den in the book yet. No, no, because oh. we're about to get to where it just picks up to like you. Okay, you think it's like at a hundred, but then you're like, oh shit, no, like it this isn't anything in. yet. How much time it goes from when they first void the contract to when Agnes is already like, I need you back. Yeah, how much time? So the contract was voided on June tenth. So they so only had it for days. three days. That was quick. Oh, three days after. Oh, July 28th. So over almost two months goes by June 10th. before wow. Agnes reaches back out. Okay, damn. June 10th to July 28th. Well, that I think that the- shows a lot because it's, I think it shows first and foremost, the financial thing, I think started it, but might not have been everything because if she, if Agnes was able to go that long without her sugar mommy, then you know, it's it's not that aspect. It really is this love, or she really misses Zoe. Wait, so the, she tells the little Christ story in her I need you back email. That's crazy. Please tell us this story. And I think that this, is this before the egg? Because this is like the first thing that I heard from Agnes that I was like, wait, are you crazy? Agnes is just, she was she was a damaged kid and she is noticing that like someone's willing to take care of her and unfortunately this person's not like a person end of book <laughs> so talk about little Christ. so um agnes reaches back out to zoe via email as we've just found out a month and a half later after avoiding the contract and basically she's like i need you back because what you did to me was kind of fucked up but they're like way more fucked up things going on in the world basically she recounts this news story of this like teenage boy how old was the older brother yeah i think teenage i think around teenage because he could drive oh yeah he he was driving so this teenage sociopath um who was so jealous that his little brother was getting attention from his parents decided to inspired by the bible hashtag protect kids from from the bible um, decided to be inspired by the horrific the scariest book of all time honestly the bible <laughs> and reenact the passion of the christ with his little infant brother and god was it sad and i hate children and god was <laughs> i sad yeah it was a very keen and able holy kind of fuck thing. And you could just picture everything. It was so detailed. It was so detailed and like maybe a little too far. Honestly, it was so bad. Was From like the baby bad. crying in the back seat because it just woke up and like is like, why the fuck am I in the back seat of this car right now in the middle of the night? To then getting nails shoved through just one of his hands and then his brother literally letting him go and letting him just dangle. 
by the one nail that is in his hand uh, as the baby screaming uh, in pain to then getting another nail in his other hand and getting left there to die basically by his brother who felt absolutely nothing about the situation yeah as quoted by by him in the police report so she she just yeah shared that little cute story with her with her sugar mama to get her back to win her back to win her back and it fucking worked it's so romantic it worked you guys think it was to win her back well it was really to show she says so that there are way like worse people like i could like, gabby just pulled up the quote it says like i can never dream of being a monster like that neither of us are monsters so don't we deserve a second chance right oh like here's the baseline yeah, yeah. she's like what you like, did to me was kind of fucked up but like it wasn't as fucked up as that so the but, bar is like, pretty low but oh, again we think oh wow, about... interesting i didn't interpret it like that the first time but that makes sense actually yeah i mean it's kind of right there right on the page like <laughs> no, I didn't mean. I didn't mean not to shade you. I didn't mean not to be shady. <laughs> he kind of fucking says it. <laughs> Read the author's note. Like it might have been there. Steph, it's okay. It was in the epilogue. It was in the epilogue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all on the author's note. You missed it. Fuck. No, but I think it just goes back to like again, like the love that she was surrounded by and given as a child, like accept the love you think you deserve right so she was just like yeah you were shitty to me but she's like uh people have been shittier to me so like this is fine honestly you're giving me money at least you're paying me to be shitty to me yeah you're not crucifying me and like you're telling me that they're already telling each other that they love each other as well totally right they're like i love you i love you love you like yeah wait can we also because like in my brain this woman is like isolated like so depressed so down like no friends no one in her life and then they drop the <laughs> chisel <laughs> her name randomly. yeah like, oh yeah running with her. that was so left field yeah i did no not see that coming field. what i i want i need backstory on the roommates yeah no, she was like oh my roommate oh wait wait wait, wait. Can, sorry we ha- can we we need to get to the pork soon yeah the we're pork. getting there oh we're, we're getting there i believe we're almost a- there oh 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 we're getting there we're yeah. so okay close. i mean that's kind of like the next big plot point let's just go there well when are the eggs <laughs> <laughs> where are the eggs yeah so um agnes is on to be in charge of babysitting for her sometimes and they would play a game where Agnes would have to stand in a closet with an egg and not break it. And what was it? If she did that, she had to eat the whole entire egg, like shell Including and the shell. all. Yes. Yes. My favorite game growing up. <laughs> <laughs> I still do it sometimes. <laughs> and you, like, you just like, how do you get that shell down? And that poor baby, how long was she in that closet for? Yeah. Exactly. What kind of, that's not babysitting. So exactly, I mean, I never blame Agnes for any of this. Like, she found love, and she uh, unfortunately was desperate and naive. So, I mean, can we talk yeah. about how how like just the small tidbits that we have of Agnes's family? We have her grandma who put a needle inside of her grandfather's apple. We have her aunt who made her eat an eggshell at, or an entire raw egg, at, including the shell, and. In general, her mom, who said, when she said she was gay, she said, my ki- my kid's not gay. Bye. When you put it into, like, a ball like that, she has had no, like, concrete, healthy love in her life. I don't know if she's had any healthy relationship, yeah, ever. So then it comes into the conversation of, you know, we accept the love that we think that we deserve. And yeah. that's going to be, like, something that will as you continue to go through this story and you see all the things that Agnes kind of not only puts up with, but enjoys and wants, you see that like maybe in her point of view that that's because in her head, she's like, there's always worse. Like I, I deserve this kind of love because at least it's not as bad as little Christ or whatever story that she could have brought up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think also like it's telling because it doesn't, or at least if I'm remembering it correctly, it didn't seem like she had, like when she was talking about her grandma putting the needle in the apple or her aunt putting her in the closet, she didn't say it like it was messed up or out of the ordinary. Like she was saying it like it was very normal and like 
yeah, this is what love is. This is what family is. This is this is what it means to to care about someone. I mean, she casually um, put it in an ad. Well, she <laughs> casually talked about that little Christ baby, like right, really? exactly. It's just so like casual. Like this is a typical Tuesday for her. Yeah. It was written in like prose. I loved it. I loved it. It was like so well written and just so descriptive and like I don't know, like it's like to think of the woman who does what we are about to discuss comparing that woman to who wrote that initial ad at the beginning like that's a whole different character like that juxtaposition is so interesting and it happens so quickly yeah you're right just like for for the plot um so after and zoe ends up messaging back you know sure let's continue with this blah 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 what is that when we get into the meat well, she, well, she's like, I want something inside. Like, I want a baby inside of me. And she's like, I, I don't know what I can do with you. But, hey, I went to, uh, like, the Kinko, like, the, she went some, like, on vacation one time, and I got a tapeworm. and In Cancun, I think. Cancun. So, you know what? That's something we could try. I think it's important to note, too, right before this happens, um, yeah, they're talking again about how uh, Agnes wants a life inside of her, and... Agnes says, I want it with you. Like, can we live together? Can we do this together? And Zoe says, no, not right now. But I have a better idea. And that's when we get into the meat. She says, yeah, um, one time I had a tapeworm from Cancun. So, and that was like having a life inside of you. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go to the butcher. You're going to get a nice fat steak or whatever, raw obviously you're gonna put it on a plate put it outside where nobody can find it and you're gonna leave it there for how long three days three days i think three days it's it's gonna get covered in some gross shit some maggots some flies it's gonna turn gray from cooking from the sun rays yeah and you're gonna take that inside after three days and you're gonna scarf that shit down and you're gonna want to throw up you're going to want to throw up, but don't. Please don't, because then it won't work. And this is the only way. This is the only way that you can get a tape. This is the way. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first of all, I feel like this. there's other ways to get tapeworms. You can just probably buy one online. Honestly. Yeah, go on a shitty website. Get the no. pills. Who was I talking well, to? Hold about on. Them? Again, 2000s. Like True. True. Um, if there's know. a will, there's a will. And like Zoe has money. You're telling me she couldn't literally she Zoe couldn't make a money. little purchase. No, she wanted her to suffer. Yeah, no, she, she wants well, this shit I, to happen. No, I think she didn't think that she was gonna do it. Yeah. She did say, Oh fuck, you really did it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. You're fucked up. <laughs> so maybe this was like Zoe's way of being like, I'm kind of done. I don't think you're going to do this. So like, I'm going to give you an impossible, like you're never going to do this thing. And if you can't do it, then you're going to like, or not that she's done, but maybe she's like, I'm ready to like get to punishment. This is the next task she gives her, right? There's not an in-between after accepting her back. This is the one. The salamander. And then they break up. And then this. Yeah. And the meat. Yeah. So it's maybe it is kind of like the punishment. It's like, hey, you wanted to leave me here's what i'm asking you to do next if you're begging if you're crawling your way back to me i'm gonna make you do this and like oh wait fuck you did it like i didn't think (laughs) you would oh shit but yeah that was the only punishment so maybe this was just i mean she didn't say it was a punishment but maybe that was her just being like all right you want to keep on doing this like we'll we'll Uh, do it then yeah let's play chicken let's see what else you will do somewhere zoe is deeply disturbed for even suggesting this stuff but i am torn between whether it was truly evil like i want you to do this shit or let's just see if she'll do it you know Uh, i think either of those options are pretty psychotic but still you know i don't know i I, personally i don't know i don't know what you guys think i'm just like quickly scanning her outlining the plan it's just so gross like eric laroca really had to do this i believe like put a piece of meat outside and just like watch it over the course of a couple of days to get all these details because it's disgusting nothing nice and formed just think of raw ground beef and just eating raw ground beef that's so fucking disgusting let alone the bugs and the maggots and being outside for two days um you're gonna buy that return home leave the beef in a place where it won't be disturbed leave it outside it won't be long 
before all kinds of insects will arrive. A glittering haze swallowing the portion of meat until they're finally nourished themselves and laid their eggs deep in its brawn. Yeah. After oh, yeah. two days of waiting, you're going to go outside and locate the sun-cooked meat. Though it may disgust you, you're to take a knife and a fork and hack through the uncooked beef. Slice off a small piece and consume it. And you'll do this until the meat is completely gone and you're fully fed. Ugh. You might want to throw up. You might feel as though you need to. I urge you to keep as much of it down as possible. That way it will work. And of course, you want this to work, don't you? The email is it's done. It's and- finished! Wait, when is the email that she told her to do it? August 2nd. And then she emails on August 5th. It's done. So, so she, she got right to work. Right to it. And what I hated about her like recounter of it is her talking about going out there every morning and just looking at the meat and being excited, seeing the maggots and the eggs like getting buried into it and going, fuck yeah, that's that's what like this shit is gonna work. Well, how about how about just yeah. the like delusion? Just the delusion period. Like <laughs> anyone in their correct, healthy white right no oh, white? <laughs> I was gonna say white mind. Stop. No, we wait can, a second. That's not this podcast. That like, Brody, right know. mind um, <laughs> knows that that will harm you in all different accounts. But she is so caught up in this, just like I am being provided. Like she was so in the delusion. Right. And I, ugh, I feel for her. I feel so bad for her. So I have a lot of thoughts on this whole tapeworm situation. But so she's been laying the groundwork kind of from the beginning that she really just wants to be a mom. And she's like really upset that that's not going to be a possibility for her. One, because she is a single woman. Two, she so desperately wants to be a mom. And like, that is quite sad. And I think like, that's like a shared experience for a lot of obviously like women and especially like queer women in like non-heteronormative relationships. Mm -hmm. Because there are like ways to conceive but like not quote unquote naturally. And I feel like a lot of women like mourn that that mm-hmm, opportunity mm-hmm. and like that that was really apparent for agnes like i think that showed a lot like even in this line she's talking about how she ate the meat and it was disgusting and she feels her teeth chewing on the maggots and all that gross shit but then she just has this thought midway like totally unprompted even a carcass can carry life so why not me like how it's displaced is that yeah. line mm-hmm. like just that desperation yeah she's no, doing all this is. nasty shit but it's just to prove to herself that she's like worthy of, of being a mom and just like she's worthy of life. her eyes yeah. dude yeah. like the connection though she's like i'm worthy of being a mom like i'm worthy of having my eyes she just constantly needs to like get that validation and where does that come from i mean drama <laughs> yeah oh, well, yes oh, exactly a mom saying my kid is not gay i don't love you bye yeah like yep yeah so i just don't know that that just sticks out it was very sad very displaced but she did it and she says my whole life could change and i hope it does and that's how she ends that email and then basically zoe is like holy shit you it. fucking did it go sit here that night on uh on yeah. instant messenger yeah do you think she was like freaking out i wonder well she said write me back so i know you're okay um it didn't work she gets the email her roommate randomly the first time we hear of it my roommate took me to the hospital the other night because i couldn't stop vomiting they ran a bunch of tests but i don't think it happened because they would have told me they would have seen some sign like oh. all the tests it didn't point to anything. So she's all sad. And Spiral's like depressed and depressed. There's no point to yeah. anything. It doesn't matter. It always never mattered. She spiraled, yeah. Because that was her one last attempt. Because in her mind, she doesn't deserve a kid. Like, she doesn't deserve her eyes. She doesn't deserve this tapeworm inside of her, this le- living being inside of her. Like, nothing matters anymore. Oh, my God, Agnes. There's a little story about the priest that she tells after the little spiral after finding out that it didn't work. She went to, like, the grocery store one day and noticed there's a priest, decided to follow him all the way out to the parking lot. And, you know, in the winter months, Mm. because this happened in winter, a lot of times animals will hide in cars because it's warm. And he was she was trying to tell him that there was a cat inside the car or underneath, underneath the car yeah. and she right. he ignored her and ran over the cat Got them out. yeah you just ran over this poor cat and he doesn't even bother to look at it he merely looks at me and asks does it matter and then drives away That's right. 
That's a man of God right there. Like, we're just getting a peek at her mental health, I think. Just, like, nothing matters. Mm-hmm. Just, like, how that, like, priest didn't give a single fuck that he just killed a cat. Like, I don't give a single fuck about anything that happens to me. Yeah, it's just yet another example of something awful that Agnes has witnessed. Yeah. And humanity's failing her again. Yeah. No, Brody, exactly. Not only is, like, she naive and not, like, willing to kind of look deeper into, like, the interactions of these things that like keep happening to her but also yeah humanity keeps failing her yeah like the minute she's like willing to like possibly tr- like this man of god literally you were joking but like man of god like supposed to like love and like care for everything she was like i don't care if i ran over a cat how disheartening is that and then how was she supposed to like believe that people could love other people correctly if she's never been shown what healthy love is or like healthy companionship relatable yeah. honestly <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe that's why this book is so good like it can go into like the deep like deep like oh my god she ate fucking raw beef maggot filled raw beef for this person but like i think a lot this book is very relatable in ways that i think kind of can like be relevant to horror and not so much like this jump scare horror but like the reality horror for sure. And like we'll definitely talk about it at the end, like reviews and our thoughts and whatnot, like ratings and shit. But like this book was shocking. Like there was a shock factor, but I think it was like justified. Like those beans were justified beans in my justified. book. Like it wasn't gory to be gory and gross to be gross. It had a purpose mm-hmm. and it was yeah. telling. I agree. It was like pushing this deeper narrative that you had it. It was like it was like a saw movie for me. Like, sure, it, on the surface level, it's disgusting, <laughs> but like there is a there is a meaning behind it and there is there's just a purpose to to why everything was intentional everything was done intentionally not just to get a rise from the audience but to to shock you for a reason i don't know i thought it was it's good i mean that's what i love about horror because it you can take the face value of it and it's scary obviously and it's this weird stuff that makes you I don't know, imagine these crazy scenarios, but also at the same time, it's in my opinion, if it's a good story, it's also commenting on the horror of what we deal with as human beings and what the deeper meaning of that is and and how horrible we can all be to each other and are in our life. None of this is like fantasy. Like none of this is like paranormal. Like this is all stuff that like, could literally have happened in real life. Yeah. I know this was set in 2000, but this could have happened yesterday. I mean, people get catfished all the time, man. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah. Let's go to the part five, gracious host. I just want to say before we start this part, um, congratulations to Agnes <laughs> oh, on God. the life that she yes. is carrying inside of her. And I can't wait for the baby shower. Okay, I have a question. And I, I asked this of Eshe, and I want to know if you two know this. Do you know about the Reddit story oh, is it me. would you love me if i was a worm no no nah. it's about a woman who shoves raw meat up her vagina no i haven't heard that um it's disgusting i'll send it to you but that's beside the point it just reminded me of this um well there was this tiktok trend that people kept asking their partners would you still love me if i was a worm oh. and i was like is it about <gasps> no it's about fucking heidi klum some shit but whatever i was like that is what reminded me of that. Like, if I was a worm, yeah. am I worthy of your love? Am I worthy of your eyes? So, so bring us, bring us in, Steph. What, what happens in the last part? She says, um, it finally happens. I woke up this morning and found myself unable to pull myself away from kneeling over the toilet. I think it's finally happened. I'm carrying life inside me. So she is like, she's morning sickness. sickness. She's like, <laughs> I think something's happening. Yeah, she's still sick. She's still puking. I don't know. She gets medication for it. She's like, obviously, I'm not going to take it and kill our baby. And like, a lot of it's like, are you happy about this too? Like, please tell me that you're happy. Like, please tell me that you're happy. And Zoe's like, I'm happy if you're happy. Just like, what was so disturbing to me about this whole thing is something so scary is happening and no one is acknowledging it. And it's just like, what do you mean? Like, this is normal. Mm. That's what this scene was giving me. Because like, if you read this out of context, it's a tapeworm. This is normal. Like, I go to the doctor. Yep. Like, it's a boy. She really, really wanted this thing to... uh... And she got it. Yeah. So basically, she emailed Zoe. She's, like, super stoked. Thanks for making me a mother. They hop on a message. Zoe's like, are you happy? I guess. I guess I'm happy, too. 
And then she's like, but what are you going to do when, like, you pass it? Because, like, that's how this works. And and Agnes said, oh, that's not that's not going to happen. Oh, the delusion. She literally says, it's not going to leave me. I'm going to keep it forever. Yes. Forever. Yes. So I think that at that point, Zoe's starting to get clued in that maybe this isn't going right. And then on August 16th at 12, 17 p.m. to be exact, Zoe sends Agnes an email saying, hey girl, how are you doing? Things went a little intense there for a second and I'm just really not like feeling this anymore. So mm. I think I'm out. I think I'm outy. And I was just like, I, I didn't think you were going to do it. Wait, like, you I really think... did everything I told you to and I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. <laughs> so then... I've created a monster. Literally. Agnes emails her back, like kind of popping off, like cursing her out, being all like upset, obviously. Call her a cunt. She does call her a cunt. They go back and forth for a little bit. Zoe says, I, you're sick and I think you need help. <laughs> you need help. Both of them need help. Yeah. So then basically it kind of ends, but Agnes is not letting up. She keeps emailing Zoe. They continue going back and forth. And then Agnes is just going crazy ex-girlfriend, sending email after email after email to which one of these emails we finally get subject, something's wrong, first line, things have gotten worse since we last. Spoke. My stomach dropped. Whoa. Me too. I was waiting for that line. So I love when the title is in the books. This comes almost 10 days later. Uh, no, the 16th. Whoa. So four days later. It's only four days. So Agnes has not responded back to Zoe in four days. Zoe says, things have gotten worse since we last spoke. I'm having this really intense pain. I think I'm going to have to pass our baby. Sorry, you mean Agnes? Yes, Agnes. Correct. And then on the 21st, she says, I think something's going to happen. Later at the 21st, I passed it. And we get this beautiful image of Agnes curled up in the bathroom floor with her freshly passed baby. And she's probably a sight for sore eyes. I mean, the parasite's probably been feasting on her for a couple weeks at this point. So she absolutely is a withered, disgusting mess. And she is basically had it. She's completely spiraled. I think this is kind of the her, her rock bottom. She kind of spins it, though. She says, I wish you were here because he's so beautiful and he has your eyes and your smile. Like, what? You don't even know what it, that looks like. Exactly. Yeah. It's just so sweet. And she has the apple peeler. And well, then she goes and gets the apple peeler and she crawls back into the bathroom. She's gently cradling the child. The peeler is trembling in her hands and she closes her eyes. And for a moment, she wonders if she truly deserved them today. And that ends the story. Oh, yeah. Damn. <laughs> I'm thinking I want to change my rating from a four to a five talking about it yeah no after conversing about this i appreciate the book so much more yeah yeah Yeah. being able to discuss it that always happens like i feel like i always have like i'm always rating unless it's awful i'm always looking to rate something like a three or a four and then i talk to y'all and i'm like oh it's a five easy what were you guys thinking like reading that ending i wasn't sure i you know i thought that maybe like is there something with the apple peeler like is this like is she gonna use it for something like i don't know i i disregarded the apple peeler completely to be honest with you and i really thought she was gonna eat it i was so worried i really really thought that was what i wanted to ask you gabriella and um brody i wanted to be like did you guys think she was gonna eat it because she was like i need to have like it's always going to be inside of me like it's always going to be inside of me like i thought she was going to eat it yeah Yeah. i don't know covered in shit because like she explains it as like a heap of moist mess on the bathroom floor and that yes i know that already just fucking uh, me yeah but it was just like I don't know how I feel about the ending. I, for one, am not big on uh, ambiguous endings. I like, I want to see her die. Like, I want to know how it happens kind of situation. The ending didn't do it for me as much as the rest of the book did. I I wasn't satisfied with that being the last paragraph. Mm. Me too. As someone who didn't read the author's note, I also was upset by... Did you know that she died? Because that's how you know. 
Or did SJ have to tell you? <laughs> That's why I'm thinking. I'm like, did she use the apple peeler? Like, did she stick that thing like in her head and just crank it? Like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So initially, yeah. Initially, I was like, oh, she kills herself with the apple peeler. And because in the author's note, they preface like they found the body of Agnes, whatever her last name was. So you assume she dies, right? They find her body in the bathroom, cuddled up with the apple peeler and and her tapeworm baby, which right. for I don't know why my brain went to SpongeBob so many times reading this book, because this book could be oh, no, <laughs> no, like does not touch SpongeBob in any fashion. It's such an obscure reference. It's but... a kid's book, actually. Yeah, for children. Yeah. I don't mean this to my kids, my future kids. No, the, the the chocolate lady. <laughs> what? What are they selling? Like that shriveled up little worm? That's, That's why I was dreaming. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just hear her holding that thing. Yeah, I think that's an accurate description. That's yeah. all I was picturing. It was, she was just so weak. She definitely wasn't eating with the parasite. Who knows how long? Yeah, I think she just died of natural causes. I kept, like, picturing, like, a scorpion, like, in the bottom of a tequila bottle. Oh. I was just thinking of, like, a long, gross-looking worm. I watched a lot of horror stories of the ER growing up, so there was, like, a tapeworm episode, so I know what it looks like, and it was, it's not pretty. They're, like, not that big, right? Uh, No, they can get long. They can get long. Big. Ugh, I'm looking up tapeworms right now. I'm afraid, but Ew. I'm gonna do it. Okay. I think as long as as long as your intestines as long as your intestines, are. which are long, six feet over six feet. It looks like spaghetti. Yeah, yeah, like, it does. Because my whole thing is like, why couldn't Zoe just buy it off of the internet with her money? Because extreme people would use it as a dietary technique because you could right. eat as much as you want and you wouldn't get fat because. The tapeworm eats it. Mm, right. So it's, True. it's eating everything that you're eating. Yeah, so think about, you You looked it up what it was. Think of that just on a heap in the floor. Six feet long. I don't know if that's how long hers was, but think of that. Six feet long, pile on the floor, and she's cradling it, thinking, he has your eyes, he has your <laughs> smile. Sis is sick in the head. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she really is. And it's just because she... Does she think that's the baby she deserves? Yeah. I agree. Yes. Definitely. Or 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 just that like, okay, like I can do, like, this is my baby. Like also like my other thing, um, just thinking about like her wanting so badly to have a child to begin with. And like when when the idea is put in her mind that this tapeworm is going to be her version of having her own child. Do you think she was so desperate to believe into it and to buy into this illusion because she just wants something, one, to finally love and have love her unconditionally and to also, mm. like, set, you know, like, some people, like, they have kids to heal their inner child mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for her to finally take care of something and to love something as unconditionally the way that she wished that she was brought up. So for her, it was like, even if this is a tapeworm child, even though it's sucking the life out of me, I'm going to love this unconditionally. Definitely. Yeah. What you said, like how people will have kids in order to do that kind of stuff. I feel like that's never the right reason to have a kid. Um, and I feel like that is what recurs the uh, cycle of trauma. But um, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think that it was her way of making all of that right she was probably like, yeah, I can raise a kid and not make it eat a full ass raw egg. She was like in euphoria at that point. She was so <laughs> desperate. She was so desperate. Yeah. Uh, I just I just think it's interesting seeing the, the change throughout the story of first Agnes being the one to say this is too messed up for me and I can't do this. And then mm-hmm. at the end, Zoe is the one saying, uh, yeah, you're fucked. <laughs> Oh, I was just gonna say, like, was did this story go like any way that you thought it was gonna go? Like, Not at all. Any sense of the word? I went in basically blind. Besides from the reactions that you were having when you were reading it in front of me, but so I had no expectations. So I can't say yes or no. I went into it thinking, I knew it was a chat room thing. The blurb makes it seem like something supernatural is happening. At least the way that I read it. I that's what I thought was going to happen. This was 
absolutely nothing at all like I thought it was going to be, but in the best way. Yeah, the blurb that we have on our little doc that we created when we were choosing books for this, Brody, all it says is like novella, chat room, and loneliness. Ooh. Those are the only three words. Oh, Interesting. Cool. So those are the, those are the only three words that I had going in. I was like, okay, it's gonna be about like loneliness, so I'm sure it's gonna be like a sad horror and a it chat is. room. Like that'll be interesting to like you know narrative to read. This was nothing <laughs> like I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, nothing. But at the same time, I think if I were to recommend this to someone and try to have it described as least about as possible, I would still use that description. Oh, it's a chat room horror and it's about loneliness. Yeah. I don't know if I would use that. I mean, like, I would definitely prefer it's like, it's about, it's about, I don't even know. I don't even know how I'd pitch it because it's kind of indescribable. <laughs> well, so yeah. So the thing about pitching it is, would we pitch it as Zoe as the villain? Would we pitch it as like, like Agnes as the naive, like queer baby gay? Like, I don't like, I think it's kind of, it's easy enough of a book to like anybody who, reads it could at least follow a lot yeah because yeah. the flow oh, yeah. is really easy it's to follow very, very yeah it's 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 nothing that you have to you don't have to infer anything i mean we do yeah. because we're readers and we we're trying to make a podcast <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah we're trying to fill an hour here but with this story it really is like for the most part what you see is what you get and, and then you can draw your own conclusions from that but and i think everyone's gonna have their own unique thoughts based on their own experience but to what you were saying about is zoe the villain here i i honestly don't know because i think that you really can make the point that zoe was trying to push the limits and trying to see how far she could take this and like i said this contract is not legally binding in any sense of the word Mm -hmm. it's all happening online agnes did not have to do anything exactly could have said that she did and nothing would have happened exactly exactly zoe is suggesting this stuff where she came up with this yeah that's arguably fucked up and definitely some mental issues there but yes the fact that agnes then was doing them all her choice ultimately there are two very different personality types yeah i think it's very clear zoe's intention and agnes's intention of connection that ended up happening over a fucking craigslist ad Mm -hmm. this all happened so fast as well like i i don't know if we i don't know if we talked about this but like you guys i was like really looking at like the timestamps and like the dates this all happened within like maybe five months like so soon because she was doing the like salamander thing by like june right the contract was around june they first made contact with each other on may 28th and they finished on august 28th may, june july august. yeah so about four months so it's even quicker it's even faster summer break baby hell yeah you know what they say about those lesbians hard <laughs> <laughs> man the president move into Those the lesbians way. move quick. Hey, mm-hmm. she was trying to. Lesbian ladies, we move fast. We don't take any time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ratings. I want to hear everyone's ratings. Mm. I think after this conversation, I'll say up until the very, very end, I would give it a 4.5. But because of that ending, I'm going to give it like a 4. Point, like 1, 4. 2. Like just a little bit over a 4. Okay, specific. Yeah. <laughs> Very specific. I, and, you know, I, I did, since switching to StoryGraph, they do allow you to do point stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think um, after initially reading it, I think I was at a solid four um, after discussing it with you all. 4.5. Mm. For sure. What's keeping it from a perfect five star? I don't know. It could be a five too. I think like in my head, I'm like, oh, well, nothing is a five. But at the same time, I I give things fives all the time. Mm. Um, (laughs) So that's not really true. Um, So maybe I'll amend it to a 4.5 to a five. How about that? No, no, no. I'm not changing it for any particular reason other than you challenged me and I thought about it deeper. And I only asked because I'm, I'm, between four and five and i feel like it didn't 
do anything wrong that it doesn't deserve five stars but if, if it was a five-star book i wouldn't be questioning it mm. you know what i mean like i would know it's a five star automatically so i think i got to settle with four for that reason yeah i am someone who loves connecting or not even connecting with the character but just like falling character. in love in with the character mm. and i think that they didn't give us enough None. of like character. it was too short for good, reason. for good reason i understand why they didn't uh-huh. but just me and enjoying books because it was lacking that i can't personally give it the five that it might deserve for others yeah, yeah and that's like a tough thing too because like i agree like i'm such a big character person and if if a story has a character that i absolutely love i'm gonna give it i'm gonna look at it so much differently but we talked about at the very beginning about how it was told and how like the format that we're given and i think that it's also very interesting because we're given it only in the ways that the two characters know each other as well so we're going off of it with the exact same information that they are and so I think that also makes it really intriguing because like, like we've been talking about the whole time, like we don't know anything about Zoe. We don't know if anything she's saying is true and, and neither does Agnes. Like, and so I think that for that purpose, like I'm okay with the characters not being so developed because like I said, like we're just acting kind of as like a third party, just looking in and seeing exactly what these two are interacting and we're not getting really any more than that. Yeah, no. And I think that like, you know, it all just again is a, like a testament to the author because like it, it's selling this narrative that you don't know who you're talking to in these situations. Like when you're in those chat rooms and like making connections online and like having that trust and that bond and that friendship start to form, like you could only go off of, the information that you're receiving you know like whatever yeah. the other party chooses to disclose is all you you have to go off of for all we know agnes was lying the whole time you know like there's yeah. no reason for us to yeah. believe she held any truth in what she was sharing about herself that's yeah. the risk you take with online chatting right we don't even know what the police report was you know we don't know anything exactly we're just rolling that dice and we're we're chatting with strangers and we don't even have the full thing either because there's stuff that was omitted yeah true yeah okay wait wait wait. okay going back to that the omitted thing there were like pictures and things that also crushed marigold i feel like there was something that crushed marigold send sent that was omitted no there, there was like two or three times where it said like omitted and yeah i think I, if not all of them were from Marigold. Mm. So like maybe those are pictures. Maybe. No clue. That is true. We're only getting half the story. True, yeah. I didn't even like pick up I, I should have picked up on that more because I really didn't because it like when I first started, I was like, oh okay, the things that are omitted are like the emails and their email addresses and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, it's like cool, like it's a real aspect of a police report, but not oh. like yeah but you're right because there were certain messages that were Mm -hmm. just omitted yeah um so you're right like there there could have been some more stuff yeah exactly yeah i don't know for me i when when i saw that it was omitted my mind kind of glossed over it Mm -hmm. it's like uh no if the story doesn't care much about it then i won't either um i i cared about it the first time it happened and after i saw it the second time realizing the first time that i kind of stuck with it for a little bit and then forgot about it i was like okay i'm gonna just i'm gonna admit it from my own mind when this <laughs> uh but steph i wanted to know your rating too yeah oh yes um <clears throat> i gave it a four when i first read it and i kind of like to stick with why i gave it a four i not that i don't like the discussions to like change my mind but i kind of like to go by my ratings on like my gut reaction and i think my rating was a four because of the ending um Gabby I think I'm kind of similar I I kind of I'd like to kind of concretely know what happens at the end I feel like sometimes my mind will just like wander and then I'm just like what did I even read if I can't even figure out what happened at the end so I I'm kind of with you on that um I think also it was just like like too short Mm. like I almost like wanted it like a little bit more I kind of wanted to know a little bit more about Zoe to be honest 
why the whole like yeah we met our expiration date like that really stuck out with me for some reason so I really will like would kind of wish that she had like been able to like elaborate on that or like that wording anyway I don't know there were a lot of there were a couple like loose ends I would have liked to have tied up yeah and I agree with that too because I mean it's tough because I I feel like the length of it was perfect but at the same time Mm -hmm. there is so much more from Zoe that I needed and also too like this was just another thought that I had and it, it seemed like when I was reading it looking at the times when they would message it was usually late at night Zoe was usually talking about like being at work and stuff. So it it made it seem like to me like that this whole thing to Zoe might have been much smaller in her life compared to how Agnes was taking it because it seemed like Agnes to Agnes. This was everything. This was her love. But to Zoe, it was like, oh, yeah, I'm busy. Sorry, I can't talk tonight or something like that. Dude, in the very beginning, she was like, oh, you need rent money? Like, let me help you out. Like, no problem. Like, she... do? <laughs> she started... Like, she like, was, like, grooming Agnes, yeah. like, in the beginning. I mean, already stripping away everything about her control, like, taking away what time she could eat, like, taking away her comfort when she sleeps, taking away her job, and basically, like, her connections to the world, because... Good problem. Like- I never thought about the fact that, like, pay her bills maybe she needed to know that the ac was on like all night because like oh my god like you like tell me i have to listen to a song all night i'm not gonna listen to it i'll just tell you i did but like Mm -hmm. you'll never know but like the ac like that like you can see that and the electric bill like true i need i need to know that you are doing exactly what i'm doing like i'm telling you to do and i'm gonna know that because of your electric bill because i pay for it and I have all, I have your bank information. I have all your account information. Like there's there's no scare. I mean, even scarier is nowadays that that happens. That'd be even more horrifying because your whole phone is your whole life. Mm-hmm. And your bank. I'm stripping yourself of basically any free will because I'm gonna know mm. exactly what you're doing and when. Yeah, I have it all. I, I was never comfortable with that from the start. Mm-hmm, same. The one she already had the con- like she obviously has done this before. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, and that is why I want to go back to the expiration date thing. Like, does she do this with everybody and just like kind of like, like has like a time like oh I do this for a couple months oh I've kind of like met the expiration date. Yeah. Yeah. Well, final thoughts to wrap up this book. Take two hours out of your day and go read it. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend this to everyone. I think it would take a special person to enjoy this book. Or at least to be able to like see it in different dimensions. Yeah. Like you could take it face value. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you're right, Stephen, because it's like, you know, if, if you recommend this to anyone, I would be afraid of people thinking that I'm fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be a hard book to recommend for sure. And, you know, it is sad and it, you know, there, there's body horror. It's very visceral. It's very, um, it's just very, uh, just like layered. There's a lot of layers to this book. It was short, it packed a punch. You would consider this body horror? I yeah. Mean, yeah. I would. Yeah. I mean, she literally allowed a parasite to infiltrate her body and feast off her. But we've rambled enough about this book. Any other, fine, any, any last thoughts? I just want to give a shout out. I know that you can see the podcast and you can't see it. But a shout out to that cover. Mm. His covers are gorgeous. Yeah. I will say too, the other novellas or short stories that Eric LaRocca has put out has absolutely beautiful covers and just great titles too. You can't see it, but we're going to return this book officially. (laughs) Goodbye. 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 While we're talking about it. One book closes, another book opens. Yes, and I'm excited for this next Coming one. Me too. Month of April, everyone, which we really read this book and had the discussion so early. So if anyone wants and needs a head start, get a head start on Bunny by Miss Mona Awad. Heard so many good things. It is so hyped. Let's see if the hype is worth it. Absolutely. Another sapphic book, Steph. Sorry. Sorry, Steph. No. You know how much I hate women <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be um really good i've heard this is deceivingly gory so we'll see we'll see how it goes 
<laughs> well, let's sign let's sign off then. I think that this discussion has reached its expiration date, so to speak. Once again, I'm Brody and alongside Steven, Steph, and Gabby. Good night and scary reading.